This is Brian Jackson, author of the Ableton Live 8 Course Clips Master DVD for Cengage Learning. In this movie, we're going to look at the sidechain filter in Live's compressor device, and also how to build one for use with the gate, which does not have its own sidechain filter. When you hear people talk about sidechaining, they're usually talking about a technique that's common in mixing, and also is an effect in a lot of electronic music. Technically speaking, all dynamics processors have some sort of detection circuit, the sidechain, and also a reduction circuit. The technique of sidechaining really means that you're using an external key as the audio source for the detection circuit. This is more or less a control voltage signal in the analog world, and not unlike what you'd see in an analog modular synth. To demonstrate these techniques and concepts, I'm using two loops that come from the Solid Sounds Live Pack by Loopmasters, which is a free download from Ableton's website. Here we have a basic disco loop. What I'm going to want to do is two things. One, I want to find a way to isolate the snare drum from this loop. This is something you'll want to do if you have just a stereo file of drums for any reason at some point. The other thing we want to do, which is the first example we're going to look at, is we want to make it so that this synth part gets ducked every time the kick drum hits. Now remember, we have just a stereo drum loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that we basically filter out all the high frequencies so that when the kick drum hits, then that is going to trigger the compressor and the other frequencies that would be where the hi-hats or snare drums are, are not going to trigger the detection circuit. So here's our drum loop and let's now bring in the synth sound and let's turn on the compressor. And if we just turn the compressor on, it's just going to compress the synth, which isn't what we want to go for. We want to punch out some space so that this loop actually has some more activity. It's a little bit more dynamic. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to solo the synth here, and then we're going to turn on side chaining. We're going to unfold the compressor to do that. And then from the audio from, we're going to choose drums, and then make sure that we choose post effects. We choose post effects, and then enable the side chain listen button right here. And then enable the EQ and use the low pass filter, turn the frequency down as you can see here, and now we can hear just the kick drum. And then we're gonna set our compressor, and you'll notice that whenever the kick drum hits, we actually get some ducking. So that's the first thing that we're gonna do, is we're gonna go ahead and get our synth working a little bit better with these drums. Okay, let's look at the drum track. As you see here, I have an effects rack. And what I've done here is created a dummy chain just by dropping the utility device in here and then turning that off. And that's going to be the chain that we actually hear the drums through. Now the one here called sidechain filter, what I've done here is create our own sidechain filter for a gate. Now there's two parts to this. First thing I've done is use the EQ8 and a high pass and a low pass to essentially create a band pass filter. And then I'm using that to trigger a gate. Now this is what we're gonna patch into in a second. So just notice that what's gonna happen here is we're just going to have it so right around where the snare drum hits is the only thing that's gonna open the gate up here. On this track here that I've named Snare ISO, I've gone ahead and selected the drum track as the input, set the monitor to in, and then made sure that I'm bringing this in pre-effects right now. And this is really important, we wanna bring this in pre-effects. So if I were to not have any devices on this track, it would sound exactly the same as the drum track. Now the key thing here is that then what I do is I put an EQ8 on here to drop out any of the low frequencies. So you can see I rolled off where the kick drum would be. And boost it a little bit in the mids. And then I have another gate here. Now this gate, I have the side chain turned on. Uh, external side chain and the audio is coming from the drums track just like the input but the next step here is instead of just picking the input I'm actually choosing the side chain filter post effects and now if we solo this you'll notice we hear just the snare drum so essentially we've isolated the snare drum from the loop by doing some clever gating so one we're basically uh, filtering it out at the source and then using that to trigger the gate on this track here. Now what this lets us do is add some reverb to just the snare drum, add some delay to just the snare drum, and of course you can go off from here and do some cool other types of effects if this was more of a pad type sound. Uh, we could also use an auto pan as a tremolo. 
want to do some semi-random triggering. There's all sorts of variations on this. So basically what we've done is we've used the sidechain filter on the compressor so that just the kick drum goes ahead and ducks this synth. And then we've gone ahead and filtered out just the snare at the source on this track on a chain in an effects rack, which we're not monitoring here. And we set that as our input on this track with the monitor to in, and then we're using that chain on the other track as our source. So if you want, you can download these files so you can go over this. And again, these were free loops. You can download them from Ableton's website. They're the Loop Master Solid Sounds. And go ahead, have some fun with gating and side chaining and creating your own side chain filters.